Climate change affects several aspects of American life, health, economics, the weather, and possibly this fall, politics. According to a recent survey from the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication, 62% of registered voters across parties prefer a candidate who supports action on global warming. When split into political leaning, 17% of conservative Republicans support it. When it comes to the why for supporting climate action, the Yale study found the most common reason among all voters was to provide a better life for their children and grandchildren. The other top two reasons were to prevent extreme weather events and to prevent the destruction of life on the planet. Let's bring in Anthony Leiserwitz, who is co who co-authored that study. He's the director of Yale's program on climate change communication. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be with you, John. All right, so the Yale po um, poll shows that, um, that uh, people care about this issue, but when we asked people in the CBS poll, mm -hmm. list, and you can see it there on the screen, list your um, seven top things that are major factors in your vote, climate doesn't show up. Yeah. Explain that disconnect. So overall, we find that when we ask people how important will 28 different issues be in determining your vote, climate change comes in right about number 12 among all registered voters. Mm -hmm. But what gets really interesting is when you break it down by political party. So among liberal Democrats, climate change is number four, okay? Very, very high in the list. Among moderate conservative Democrats, it's in the middle, about 14. But among uh, all Republicans, it's pretty darn close to the bottom. So if it's going to have a, if it's going to play a role in this election, it would be basically enthusiasm on the left. Exactly. I mean, one of the key strategies in becoming a president or winning any election yeah. is mobilizing your own base to show up and vote. The key demographics for Democrats in particular are young people and people of color who tend to not vote in proportion to their size in the population. If young people voted at the same level that their parents and grandparents did, most elections wouldn't even be close. So it's really incumbent upon Democrats, if they want to engage those particular groups, young people and people of color, climate change is one of the issues that they care most about. And when, exactly. Let me ask you now about, about conservatives, because what your findings show is that moderates and conservatives, the number of people who claim that global warming is not happening has gone up. What accounts for that? And, and help me with the distinction, because there are those who say global warming isn't happening, and then those who say, well, it may be happening, but humans don't contribute it to it. Right. So the global warming is not happening is kind of the more extreme position. That's right. So look, Republicans are, are divided on this. About 50% of Republicans think climate change is happening. About 35% of Republicans say it's not happening. And about the other 15% really just don't know yet. So it's just to say there's a lot of different viewpoints within the Republican Party itself. It's been very hot in Arizona. Yes. Um, record number of 100 degree or 100 days over 100 degrees. Over 100 days. Has that affected the way people in, say, Arizona might feel about this issue um, relative to somebody who might live in a battleground state where it's not been so noticeable? So we've been tracking changes in how people are responding to extreme weather for the past 17 years. Mm -hmm. And we're now seeing finally that that experience, that direct experience, is starting to actually show up in people's viewpoints about climate change. So increasingly, Americans say that they are themselves experiencing these impacts of fires, of heat waves, of floods, of more severe storms. And that's beginning to have an impact, not just on our public opinion, but on our politics. What do we know about, and you explained so well the relationship with the Democratic Party, what do we know about how public opinion about climate affects action? I'm thinking of the ozone layer, yeah. right? T tell that story briefly, and does that tell us anything about how future political action might affect policy. It's actually a wonderful story of how the public often leads policy. So Americans first learned that, that uh, ozone depleting chemicals, CFCs if people remember, uh, were having this terrible effect in creating this thinning of the ozone layer. They heard about that through the news media long before policymakers took any action and they immediately started doing things like stop using hairspray and using spray uh, uh, you know underarm deodorant because like why would I destroy the planet just so I can spray my hair so that actually pre-led the policy change and leaders actually followed in that case the public we're beginning to see that same kind of thing happening around climate change as well because unfortunately the realities, the impacts of climate change are right here, right now, affecting people not just across America but all over the world. And help me with my history. Did people have a direct feeling or effect by the ozone layer or was it just a theory that they were told about? Well, they, what they had learned was the idea that this thinning of the ozone layer was going to allow more harmful ultraviolet light through uh -huh. which would cause skin cancer. So yes, there was a direct effect that I go outside in the sunshine, nobody wants skin cancer. Right. 
Anthony Lazarowitz, thank you so much for being here with us Thanks. from the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication.